following episode is one in a series of videos that highlight several middle school math teachers in the school district of Beloit. These teachers share their thoughts and views about video impact on their classroom instruction and professional development activities. Parental viewing is advised. I used to think, uh, I come in, I've got my lesson, the kids sit quietly in their seats, um, they take out their notebooks, I show them how to do a problem, a formula, um, that type of thing. Uh, if they have a question about, it, about the formulas, fine, then you can talk about it, but otherwise be quiet, let me, let me show you how to do this. Um, here's a, a few problems to practice, let's make sure we know how to do it. And here's a few problems out of the book or a worksheet, now practice it on your own. Come back tomorrow, I'll check it, um, and it's going to be either right or wrong. The answer is 12, and if you get 11, that's marked wrong. You get a check mark. You know, it's not correct. And, you know, I, I taught it to you yesterday, so you, you know, should have mastered it now. We practiced it. You should know this. And, um, and the next day, we go to the next, and the next, and the next. And, um, and it's just so uh, solo, and so, um, I don't know, um, so anti what we're doing now. So I guess when I used to think about teaching math, that's what I thought. I was in charge, everybody else comes in, sits down, be quiet, learn from me, practice on your own. Now I believe that um, it's, that I am, you know, the, I'm still in, in charge of the classroom, I'm still the leader, but, you know, it's not, if my voice fills up this space, you know, very often, then I'm not doing my job. It's the kids that are, should be talking to each other or, or addressing the class. Um, you know, I'll, I'll speak initially to kind of get things going and maybe give a little bit of an example, but then it's them that, that needs to be working and talking to each other and, and, and bringing it back and, and helping to solidify the idea at the end. Um, and if they don't get it the first day, all right. You know, when I, when, I check, when I used to check the homework, it was right or wrong, you know, four out of six points, you know, four out of six questions correct, whatever. And now it's... Um, that's a lot more um, subjective, that if there are four problems, um, and I see that they've worked all four, and they're pretty close on all four, they have, they have the basic idea, they just made a couple minor errors, then they still get their full credit. They did everything they needed to do. Then I'm not, right now, they don't need it to be mastered. The next lesson will help take them a little further, and the next investigation will go a little further. And then, you know, maybe a week from now, after we've practiced it a, enough times and had a chance to, to, to you know, maybe more appropriately say that, well, they should have a better idea of mastery now. Uh, then we'll do some sort of a checkup, and, and then I, I will point for point, problem for problem, check something. And, um, but up until that point, they're, they're welcome to collaborate and, and, ha and help each other, because the person sitting right next to them may be able to say it better than I can. They might have just that one little phrase that's going to cure any problems they were having. So. Um, yeah, when I think of it now, it's a lot more collaborative, a lot more um, letting them work, not listening to me talk and talk and talk. I'll talk when necessary, but um, you know, it's them that, that's going to be doing it. When I think of teaching mathematics, I used to think that it was more of a I tell you do process. Um, I've always naturally, I think, incorporated that sort of question answer inquiry based but ultimately it was I show you do I'm the expert I'll show you how to do it you'll practice it and then hopefully you'll become the expert it, it was a lot more by the numbers process for me um, and that's how I ta uh, that's how I was taught and quite frankly I, I learned well that way it, it but it makes sense to me but now I believe there's a different way I want to teach is I, I want the kids, of, of course I want right answers, but I, and I don't want to say I've minimized the right answer because that always raises alarms in people's heads like, well he doesn't care about the right answer. Absolutely I do. But more important to me now is that they understand how they're, they're getting the right answer. And the development at Beloit, through all the courses they've offered, they've been bringing in uh, an advisor, Steve Reinhardt, over for the past five years, and by doing activities 
um, working through these problems, discussing the problems in the CMP book, I'm starting to better understand how to get what I want out of my kids instead of just me showing them for them to actually understand the process and to give relevance and credence to their way of thinking. Just because they didn't put it in the three-step way I do it, it took them eight steps. But they're understanding it, they're understanding why it's working. They put anchors in their head so when they get to a test, it's like, ooh, I forgot that formula, I'm out of luck now. To like, wait a minute, I think that was how, many, how much uh, paper it takes to wrap a cereal box and they can go back and reconstruct. I used to think that my special needs students could not learn at grade level. I teach sixth grade, at that time I taught sixth, seventh, and eighth grade special education, and I taught out of second, third, and fourth grade books. I thought what I was doing was fantastic. I thought that's where the students needed to be. I did time tests, I felt that they needed to know their multiplication, division, addition, subtraction facts, and that was important. It was working well. But now I believe that my students can succeed at grade level and not just succeed, but they're learning. They're learning and they're expanding their knowledge and it's just wonderful the things that my students are able to, to learn and by group work and by investigations and um, problem solving. Things that I never ever would have imagined that my students could learn, they're learning now. And this is in my 28 years of teaching, so I've been teaching for a long time. When I taught math about 10 years ago, I used to think of a topic. Every day we had a topic. It was dividing decimals, multiplying three-digit numbers, um, doing bar graphs. Every day we had a topic. And I had 46 minutes or 48 minutes, and we checked the work from the day before, we did a lesson, and then I planned so much homework for them to do, they'd take it home and finish it, and then the next day we would do division of decimals, and we would just keep continuing on. Every day was a single topic, and my lesson planning all revolved around each of those individual topics. But now I believe, and, and it has taken time. I've had my, my setback moments before, and I think it's just because I wanted it to be easier for me. And then those are the days that are in January and February when I forget about the kids. But um, overall, I know it's the right thing. And when I come in in the morning, my job is not to think of what the 20 minutes are going to be that they're going to work on homework, and it's not what is the exact topic for tomorrow, but it's to look at the lesson and look at what the main objective is and to read through what the investigation might appear to look like. And then for me, my teaching has not so much focused on being an instructor, but more of a, um, a collaborator with the kids. And I'm the one that goes around and tries to ask the intelligent questions so that I can pull the information from them. And so my role has changed drastically. Um, I know yesterday we were talking about ratios and we were, uh, the kids were comparing ratios to fractions to percents. And they were doing such a great job and all the time I, I wanted to chime in one more thing. And I've learned now that it's best for me to be quiet because they'll say what I was going to say probably in a better way. And so um, I've learned not to repeat them or not to get on the board and go on my bandwagon, but it's been tough. I used to think, uh, no way, I'm not gonna do it. Um, I am always one of those people I know that math is very important. And I always got A's and B's in school, but it took me a lot of practice and a lot of whatever to get it finished. And I'm an, I'm an English minor, so give me the English, give me the language arts. They said, okay, you need to teach math. It's like, fine, we can do this. Um, I think that, you know, since with the, the staff development, the nice part about that is I can learn what people other than special ed teachers are doing and I can pull that into my classroom because since I don't have the math background, I have the language arts background, um, 
I know what's in the book and I can teach what's in the book, but people who have the math background are more likely to be able to give me things that I didn't know. And once I understand them, then I can teach them better to the students. Whenever I thought about teaching math, I never wanted to teach it because it was so textbook oriented, so dry, so regurgitative. I just didn't like it at all. And um, when I heard about the Connected Mathematics program, I did a lot of research on Connected Mathematics and, and read the philosophy and that type of thing and said, yeah, I, I can do this. This is cool. This is within my beliefs. It's in my philosophy. It's collaboration. It's student discussion and student centered and I really thought that was a really neat aspect of this program. So I guess in a way I'm kind of lucky that I've never taught a different program because Spectrum did a different program but it was still student learning and that type of thing. I wish I was taught that way. Yeah, because I think if I had I probably would have gone further in math. Yeah, I really, this program itself has enlightened me and given me all like a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I was like, I really know what that means. I mean, I could do it. I got A's and everything like that, but I didn't really understand the concept behind it when these kids are actually understand, understanding the concepts behind the, the um, formulas and the rules and that type of thing.